We saw that believing in Jesus Christ, we must always fight spiritual battle. Do not lose all of the pure gospel. Because there is a changed gospel that has been sneaked into the church. And never lose the truth that it is by faith in Christ and Christ alone that people are justified. Praise the Lord, church. This is the day that the Lord has made, that we will rejoice and be glad in it. All members of Mombasa Mission Church and to our dear viewers who are viewing this message through YouTube, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that you will experience the blessings of the throne of heaven falling upon you even during this blessed hour of worship. Today, I will be talking about the life that bears the marks of Jesus Christ. The scripture comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 11 to verse 17. But let's first begin with a word of prayer. But dear everlasting Father, we want to thank you for this blessed moment of worship. We want to thank you because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we are strong because of your power upon our lives, O oh God. Lord, continue to guide us in every step that we take, and may you receive all the glory and honor through our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's read God's word in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 11 to verse 17. And this is what the word says. See what large letters I use as I write to you, with my own hand. Those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised obey the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is new life. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule even to Israel of God. Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless his word. Amen. Dear worshipers, today I will, will share a message and we'll all be able to see clearly the covenantal consuming passion that Paul had even as he lived for the sake of Christ. And this is the kind of passion that we need to develop in our lives, even in our works of faith. We will also see the various hardships, the various kinds of hardships that Paul went through as he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. This should be an encouragement to you that no matter what happens to you, no matter what challenge comes your way, you don't need to be discouraged. You need to rejoice because the Lord is in you. He is with you and he is for you. No challenge could stop Paul's passion of spreading the gospel of Christ. And no challenge should also ever discourage you to live a life before Christ and live a life for Christ and Christ alone. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, before getting deeper into this message of the life that bears the marks of Jesus Christ, let us first review the three core lessons 
that we receive from the book of Galatians. Now, lesson one. We learn that other than the gospel of the dead and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other gospel that you and me need to follow. And the word cautioned us that there are people trying to trouble us with their legalism. Those days they used to trouble the Galatian church, trying to influence them and trying to push them to be circumcised. And today there are people who are trying to trouble the church of Christ with other teachings, teachings about oil, water, salt, and other weird practices. These are troubling people. They are troubling believers with these kinds of uh, teaching which are different from what our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Paul confidently states that even if we or angel from heaven should preach to you another gospel other than the one which you received, let that person be eternally condemned. You should have unwavering conviction too that the gospel of Christ is absolute. It's unique and is complete and it's an eternal gospel. That's what we need to embrace and that's what we need to receive answers even as we embrace. This pure gospel must forever be our platform. It should forever be our only, our uniqueness and by it, we should all experience works of recreation in our lives. Hallelujah. Now, lesson two from the book of Galatians. We saw that believing in Jesus Christ, we must always fight spiritual battle. Do not lose all of the pure gospel. Because there is a changed gospel that has been sneaked into the church. And never lose the truth that it is by faith in Christ and Christ alone that people are justified. Not by following legalistic actions or some rituals, some religious rituals that religion may teach you. Apostle Paul emphasized that we should not submit again to the yoke of slavery. There is a yoke of slavery that wants to enslave you through legalism, through religion through humanistic practices. Instead, we have to enjoy the true freedom that the gospel gives. Hallelujah. And then the third lesson from the book of Galatians is that life led by the Holy Spirit is the kind of life that we need to live. It is only when you are led by the Holy Spirit that you will be victorious in all your spiritual battles. Do not be deceived by introductory things, but all to only Christ, only the kingdom of God, and only the work of the Holy Spirit. These are things for the main theme which we need to enter into. Enter into the main theme. And in so doing, we'll find ourselves, our work of faith, planting in the right area. The right things, the spiritual things, because the one who sows for the flesh will reap destruction. But the one who sows for the spirit will reap eternal life. May you be the kind of a believer who sows for the spirit and reaps eternal life. Hallelujah. And now towards the end of the book of Galatians, Apostle Paul talks about the marks on his body. Now what kind of marks were this? These were marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? It means all the persecution that Paul went through as he lived his life for Christ were for the sake of glorifying the Lord. The marks that he received show the kind of life that Paul lived. And to the Galatian church, Paul encouraged them to lead lives that Live behind marks of Jesus Christ. May you also live a life that leaves the marks of Jesus Christ. Remember your footsteps. 
the footstep that you leave behind by doing your devotion your investment even investing your material things it's very important before our lord god you will receive an eternal reward from our father in heaven hallelujah now point number one in today's message says the only thing to boast about you see again the book of galatians chapter 6 verse 11 to verse 14 it says see what large letters i use as i write to you with my own hand those who want to make a good impression outwardly are trying to compel you to be circumcised the only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of christ not even those who are circumcised obey the law Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your flesh. Verse 14 says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Hallelujah. Paul boasted only for the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. And we see that he says, See what kind of what large letters i used to write to you with my own hand now the letters of paul's were being recorded by other people as paul dictated them because he had like eye eyesight problem but this letter to the galatians he wrote it himself with his own hand with a passion so that they may realize the desire of God, the will of God upon them. Hallelujah. He wrote with his own hand. Now, he made it clear that religion is centered on human efforts. But the gospel is centered on God. We should live a life that is centered on the creator God. Hallelujah. And religious, religion cares so much about self-appearance, how we appear before people, our looks before people. They want to show up in the flesh. At those days, they were showing up to the Galatian church that have been circumcised. I have brought this many number of people to be circumcised. And as the Bible states in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, that having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with such people. These people in their religion, they just had a form of godliness and they were denying the power of God, the power of the gospel, because the gospel is the power of God. Just having a form, outward form, and Paul said in verse 14, let me read again. May I never boast except in the cross of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Hallelujah. We don't need to boast for anything else. Apostle Paul says, boasting about Jesus Christ and the salvation that you receive through Jesus Christ. Is the only thing that you need to boast about. Because through Christ Jesus. And we who are in Christ Jesus. We have become new creation. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17. He says if anyone is in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has gone away. Beyond the new has come. Hallelujah. We are new creatures. New creation in Christ. Paul had so many things he could have boasted about. He had the highest education in the law at that time. He came from a good family background. He came from a prominent city in his time. But when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul confessed. All that which was profit to me, 
I count it lost compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 to verse 9. Remember, knowing Christ is the greatest knowledge. Is the greatest discovery. Is the best place to be found on in Christ. Hallelujah. And 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16 he said, Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. He lived for the sake of preaching the gospel of Christ Jesus. Having counted all other things as rubbish compared to the goodness that is in Christ. He resolved to live for the sake of preaching Christ. And he did not care whether the gospel is preached in good or bad motives by other people. What he rejoiced about is that the gospel is being preached. And that's what he said in Philippians chapter 1 verse 18. He rejoiced that the gospel of Christ was being preached. Hallelujah. Now point number two. Covenantal consuming passion. Let's see verse 17 of Galatians chapter 6. He says, Finally, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. Let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let no demon cause me trouble. Let no religion cause me trouble. Let no idol worshiper cause me trouble because I bear on my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what kind of marks were this? I told you in the introduction that the hardship, the challenge that Paul went through, the persecution that he went through, this persecution left marks on his body. And this marks served to glorify the Lord. And Paul boasted about that. He was not ready, he was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let's see 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24 to verse 27. Let's see some of the challenges that Paul went through. Now it says from verse 24, Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with a rod. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers. In danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at, the, at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled, I've often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirsty, and I've often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. These are challenges and hardships that Paul went through. So do not think that it's something weird that you're going through certain challenges in your life. If it's for the sake of Christ, let those challenges, let those hardships leave behind marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no need to hide the gospel because of legalistic or religious reasons. Boldly say, I am a person who bears the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. I belong to Christ. Therefore, I'm ready to go through anything for the sake of Christ Jesus. And whatever happens to me, I boldly believe what the Bible says. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Those who have been called according to his will. And we are the ones who love the Lord. We are the ones who are being called according to his will. So whatever happens to us, we who belong to the Lord, it will work for the good. And that's why we have a reason to thank God in all circumstances. Because in the end, it will be well with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. And may God bless his word. Next Sunday, I'll talk about Thanksgiving 24 hours. A life of Thanksgiving. God bless you so much. Let's pray. The everlasting Father, I want to thank you. I give you all the glory and honor 
For Lord Jesus, you are with us, you are in us, and you are for us. And all things work together for our good. We have a reason to thank you. Lord Jesus, may our lives leave marks of the Lord Jesus Christ whenever we go and to wherever we meet for the glory and honor of your name and in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you hi this is Reverend Simon Kyoko of Mombasa Mission Church thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel if this broadcast has been a blessing to you kindly like subscribe and hit the notification button you can also share with your friend so that they can also be blessed as you have been blessed and if you happen to be within Mombasa on a Sunday you're welcome to our worship services we are gathering in Likoni every Sunday from 9 30 in the morning God bless you so much Amen Mombasa Mission Church preaching the word nurturing disciples 